what's the first thing you do in a new house? What's the first thing you unpack? Besides, I guess, whatever is in the cooler and needs to go in the refrigerator. For years, my dad has always unpacked the sound system the first. Before he does anything else, he does whatever is necessary to have music in the room. And nowadays that just means, you know, taking his iPad and plugging it into a speaker. But for years, apparently, I'm told it was things like um, unpacking the speakers and getting out the turntable and unpacking all of the records. And my mother has thought this was kind of amusing. It's like, Dave, we have all these things to unpack. And there you are with the records. They've been together for 30 some years. I seem to have inherited some of these tendencies. For me, it's not the sound system or music that I have to attend to first. It's books. It's the bookshelf, specifically. I love books. I always have for as long as I can remember, and I've always liked my bookshelf to be just so. That doesn't mean that it's alphabetized or organized in a particular way, but it means that the things that I like the most, the books that I love and feel like are my companions on my journey, I want them to be there. And that says to me, I'm here. This is my home. As someone who recently moved into a new apartment, I was excited to discover that we were spending this whole month talking about home. And I was particularly excited to think about the ways in which we as Unitarian Universalists create a sense of sacred space in our homes. How do we make our homes feel sacred? And I think that it's through doing things like I described. I don't necessarily have an altar. Some of you do, I'm sure, have beautiful home altars or a niche where you put things that you love. I have my bookshelf. And I realized that this is my altar. This is where I have the pieces of my life. I have the books that I love. I have a chalice. I have mementos of places I've been and other places I've lived. In all of the change that was going on around me this fall, my bookshelf was my touchstone. It reminded me of who I was and where I was and what I valued most. And that's how we create a sacred space. After the bookshelf, the thing I set up next was my table. Everybody needs a table, right? I had set it up very carefully with a lovely bowl full of fruit, um, two candlesticks, a chalice, a picture of a raven that is meaningful to me. And as someone who works from home, I spend a lot of time at this table. I work here, this is where I eat, this is where I entertain. It's funny, I'm a person who lives alone, and yet I made sure when I moved into this new apartment to get a table that could fit several people. I think I could fit six people around this table, maybe more if we really squished. And that's because it's been important to me for a long time that my home be a place of gathering and creating community. It's important to me to set the table. I realized that one of the things that I learned about the most in seminary is setting a table. Setting a table for the divine, inviting the holy in, creating a place for it. Some of this learning about setting the table was quite literal. I worked for my last year of seminary at this Christian seminary at the worship office. And we spent a lot of time creating the space. And that meant everything from the ministry of moving the chairs into a different order um, to the ministry of making sure that we had enough grape juice for the communion service. And I really did come to see those things as a ministry. I came to really love thinking about how the space where we do worship influences our experience and thinking about what will this 
service be about? What are we trying to help people experience? And how can we reflect that and encourage that through the colors we use, the objects, the candles, and, of course, the table? And I was surprised, but one of my favorite parts of that job that year in the chapel was setting the communion table. It was a very radically open and experimental communion table, and I, there was something I really liked about the idea of sharing a meal together as a sacred act and the ways in which we could literally set the table for God. The table and gathering at table has been a central practice and theme of Christian life since the earliest times. Uh, Jesus and his followers would, we are told, gather at table. And I was taught that this practice of gathering at a table, creating communion Eucharist, originated not in a set of particular ritual actions, but in a meal, in gathering with one another for fellowship, for um, food and wine and singing songs and telling stories. Of course, it's not only in Christianity that the table and eating together becomes a sacred act. Think about um, breaking the fast for Ramadan in Islam. Or in Judaism, the holiday of Passover revolves in a large part around meal practices and gathering for a meal in a particular order, in a particular way to tell the story of Exodus and of liberation. There are many ways in which people invite the sacred into our, their homes. It might be a piece of the Torah on the door. It might be a home altar. It might be the particular care with which we set a table. We're heading into a time of year when many people create sacred space in their homes, inviting the sacred stories and practices of the past into their homes, maybe through an advent wreath or a solstice altar or a nativity scene, maybe Hanukkah candles. How do you invite sacred space into your home? How do you set the table?